should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. You're tuned in to Hoppy Hour, an hour where Hoppy rants about something. Sit back and listen in. Hoppy Hour is on now. Hoppy Hour is on now. Well, hello there. How's it going? Great to hear. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And after this show, I want my opinion to go right to your cranium. After this show, the way you think about what I'm about to talk about, I want to have my opinion be the way you think about it. Because I have a lot on my mind tonight. And when I say a lot, that isn't even saying enough. I have so much I want to talk about. But first, tweet at me. At Ryan Hoppy Radio. And I will be sure to see the tweets in real time. Also, you can call the show. I will be sure to take the call live. It's 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Also, if you're listening via the app that's on the Google Play or iPhone shop, Search up Hoppy Radio, and there you can hear all 130 interviews I've done since July, and you can also chat me live through the feature. You get to listen live to the show, and the chat feature's there, and I get the chats in real time. So it's there as well. We have so much to get into. So, (laughs) oh boy, do I have a few things to say about the city of Philadelphia. Oh, boy, do I have a few things on my mind. And you probably know the approach I'm going to take to this. You probably are thinking, oh, Hoppy's so predictable. Hoppy and his fake outrage. Oh, he's being a shock jock. If anybody out there after this rant even thinks about calling me a shock jock, then you're a moron. If anybody out there thinks that the thing I'm against fake outrage if you even imply that what i'm about to say is just to piss people off and just for material then you're wrong what i say is what i feel and i pour my heart into it and when i say that the city of philadelphia is full of scumbags i mean it it doesn't mean that everybody in philadelphia is a scumbag it doesn't mean every citizen of the metropolitan area is a scumbag but that city is full of scumbags with no life and let me explain a lot of cities are like that the ones that have passionate fan bases like pittsburgh philadelphia new york boston chicago detroit wisconsin and milwaukee and green bay i get it Every city has their fans. Trust me. I'm not just pinpointing out Philadelphia, but I kind of am. Forever, we've kind of joked about it. We've been like, oh, yeah, the city of brotherly love, even though they're drunken idiots. Oh, yeah, Philadelphia. They like to swear in front of kids. Oh, yeah, Philadelphia. They're not classy. And we've always kind of given the city a pass. We go, oh, whatever. They mean well. No, 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 no. What happened last night at the Flyers versus Capitol game should be a precedent for Philadelphia to be embarrassed. If I'm anybody from that city, if I'm anybody living in that city, if I'm anybody that's a fan of those teams, I would be embarrassed. I wouldn't even watch the playoff games. What happened last night was an absolute disgrace. And what's funny about it is we live in such a PC culture. Everything's so politically correct that nobody's saying it. Everyone's kind of giving them a pass. The national media is not even talking about it. 
It wasn't on Sports Center or NBC Sports or Fox Sports One. When I was at the gym today on the treadmill, I've tried to see if anyone's talking about it. No one's debating it because it's a subject we don't want to talk about. But Philadelphia is full of scumbags who take sports too seriously. I get it. I get the 76ers are atrocious. I get that the Phillies are in rebuilding mode. I get that the Eagles are in embarrassment. I get it. I get that there's cold weather. I get that you're a gritty city that loves your sports. But so is Chicago. And you never see them screaming F a team during the moment of silence. You never see them flicking off players while trying to take a selfie. Last night was an embarrassment. What are you doing throwing bracelets onto the ice? What is that accomplishing? Did it help your team win? Uh, no. They lost 5-1. to one. Did it help your team gain momentum? Uh, no. Did it give your city any pride? No. It made you look like a bunch of drunken morons. And now you're going to say, Hoppy, they're not all drunk. They were tailgating since 2 p.m. Who the hell does that? Oh, yeah, the tailgating really worked. <laughs> Philly pride, bro. <laughs> if I'm from Philadelphia today, I'd be embarrassed. Oh, boy. It's ridiculous. We got a comment here in real time. Someone said, hey, Ryan, what's up, Reds? I appreciate you listening. And this is from Russian achieves never breaks.com why is some russian blog talking about what happened in philadelphia because the national sports media is so timid and so weak they're afraid to talk about it what an embarrassment we're just going to let this city you know get away with it and even before i get into the article because there's plenty to rant about i'm not even done but what i love too is nobody's taking any responsibility from that city Nobody is saying we need to change our act. They're all trying to say, oh, you don't get us, man. That's just us being passionate. That's just a few fans. No. You don't see this happening in Houston. You don't see this happening in Phoenix. You don't see this happening anywhere. It's getting out of hand. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, what are you getting out of it? What did you possibly get out of those riots? And we seem to have a call in real time on happy hour. And I will be sure to get to the voicemail after this. But my point is like, how can you even defend your city? Why not take responsibility and say, we need to be better. We need to step up to the plate and quit being so embarrassing. But no, Philly doesn't want to admit that they're an embarrassment and that they're the joke of the sports world. So they're trying to defend themselves like a bunch of idiots. And it's not even working. <laughs> I have Philly pride. Good for you, buddy boy. Ugh. You sound down. You're turned off. Ha, ha, ha. Someone said, I love Hoppy's rants, and they said they cracked me up. I try. I try. Because nobody wants to talk about it. That Philly's an imbecile city. So is Pittsburgh. It's these gritty cities. These cities that are cold out. Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. It's all the cities in that Rust Belt area that it's so cold out. All you have is sports to watch. But do you realize that your actions don't change the game? Do you realize that if you get drunk and you throw bracelets or you don't throw a bracelet or you act up or you don't act up, it doesn't matter. You're not talented. You're not good enough to play. You have nothing to do with the ultimate outcome of the game. So sit down, shut up, and appreciate the tickets. Appreciate that you're at the game, you douchebags. Oh, good riddance. Oh, I'm so sick of them. All right. Here is the article. A summary of all the disgraceful things. There's a summary. It wasn't like there was one thing. A bunch of things happened last night. On Monday night, the Flyers and their fans intended to honor founder Ed Snyder, who died last Tuesday due to bladder cancer. Okay, so you would think. You're a proud city, you know. As Philadelphia says, oh, we're so proud. We're so great. We're so honorable. We're so passionate. Your founder, Ed Snyder, just died, you know. He's gone, taking a dirt nap. He's gone forever. 
you'd think it'd be time to honor him because you love your flyers so much, man. You guys are so passionate. This would be the time to give him what he wants. He's rolling over in his grave to this douchebag. Not going to even play the audio. <laughs> it's so funny, though, because I don't want to give them the time of day. But there's a moment of silence, and they're like, let's all remember Ed Snyder. And it's quiet for about seven seconds. And then you hear, yeah! And then you hear somebody in the background go, fuck the Capitals! <laughs> if I'm Ed Snyder's kids, I must be infuriated that that's how my dad's going out. If I'm Ed Snyder, I'd be embarrassed that that's the fan base I built. Good riddance. F the Capitals. I would get, if you were remembering somebody from the Capitals, maybe then you say F the Capitals. It doesn't make sense. It wouldn't be classy, but then you can at least defend it. Eh, you know, they don't like the Capitals. Your own founder just died. You're supposed to be remembering him. If you guys are so great, you have nothing to worry about. If you guys are so great, you don't have to be douchebags during the memory part. You know what I mean? Like, if you guys are so confident about your team, be honorable, be classy, and be responsible. But that's way too much to ask from this douchebag fan base. Good, it feels good to get this out. Everyone's going to be like, oh, you're too hard on Philly. Am I? Oh, because they've earned so much respect. The city of brotherly love, even though they're not. They embrace it. You don't hear Charlotte fans being like this. Or Atlanta fans? Nobody acts up like this. But Philly, yeah. Let's get drunk and be an embarrassment. I worked the game for the Tampa Bay Lightning about four months ago at the promotions tent. They have me and somebody in promotions. We're the promotions team for the bone. We hang out in a tent. I love it. We have cornhole. We get to mingle with the fans. And what's awesome about that gig is People from Canada come up because it's all the visiting cities that are coming to Tampa, which is a transplant area. It's warm out. They're coming for a vacation. They go to a game. And I talked to a lot of people from Philly. And everybody from Philly said, yeah, we're embarrassed to bring our kids to games because we have to cover up their ear. What city do you have to go to where you have to be afraid of your kids going because people swear? (laughs) It's Philadelphia. Give them a pass. They mean well. Ugh. But Flyer fans, some of whom had reportedly been tailgating since the early afternoon, showed boorish behavior that only got worse as the President Trophy winning Capitals humbled the home team in the third period. It was undignified. It was embarrassing. And it was, as Al Koken put it, a clown show. So first... You have a player from the Capitals warming up, and you have this drunken imbecile who looks like he's done nothing with his life. You have this drunken imbecile who is reportedly banging on the glass and saying all these obscenities like, hey, you suck, hey, F you. You can tell this is the one guy's moment to shine because he has nothing going on in his life. He has no woman in his life. He's not getting laid. He has no friends. Because no dude, he looks like he's about 30, no normal sports fan puts that much attention in bothering the players and being that obscene. Last week, I was the Malectronic Rocket Man. And it's where you're right next to the glass for the Red Wings. It's one of the biggest sponsors of the Lightning. Shout out to Ben Malik for the opportunity. I had so much fun being in the Rocket suit. But my approach was, you can bother the Red Wings. You can bother the Capitals if you're a fan. Just look at them. Don't leave the presence. I was on web blogs because you saw my Rocket suit blowing kisses. My whole point when I was being the mascot for the Malectronic Rocket Man, I wanted to take the classy route where you have fun. Sports is supposed to be fun, not a drunken mess. If you want to be a drunken mess, go out to the bar, get blackout drunk, and leave us alone, you imbeciles. A bunch of dirtbags. And then you have Pierre Maguire doing a report. (laughs) This is great. And he's right next to the Capitol's bench, and this woman puts her middle finger in front of the camera to flip off the bench. What is that going to get you? 25 likes? 
What is that going to get you? A bunch of views on Snapchat? Oh, maybe 10 retweets from a bunch of moronic Flyer fans, honey? What did you get out of that? Explain to me. By flicking off the bench, do you feel more badass now? Do you feel better about yourself because you have nothing going on in your life, so this is your one time to act up? What did you get out of it? Explain to me. Please explain to me. Any Philadelphia fan, what do you get out of flicking the bench and then taking a picture of, uh, fuck the Capitals, get it? I put the bird, uh, sh- imbeciles, shut up. God, it feels good to say something. It only got worse from there. When John Carlson put the caps up, 4-1, fans began to leave for the exits, giving up on the team. But you got to have Philly pride, bro. Where's the pride for your city? Chicago wouldn't leave. Tampa doesn't leave. Where's the fan base, bro? You guys are the brotherly love. You paid good money. Maybe your drunkenness is coming down and you realized you didn't care about the game. Why are you guys leaving early? Anything can happen. Oh, that's right, because you're a bunch of imbeciles. With under eight minutes left to go, Flyers forward Pierre Edouard Bellamar. I, I don't watch hockey. I can't pronounce the name. My bad. Checked another player head first into the boards. Fans responded by throwing their bracelets on the ice. What did that accomplish? Please explain to me what you got out of that. Did you feel better about yourself? Were you like, woo, I showed him. Did you then go home and go, honey, did you see when I threw the bracelet at him? Is your wife going to go down on you tonight because you're so manly because you threw bracelets on the ice like a pussy because you would never do it to his face? And if you did, your blackout drunk ass would be embarrassed. You'd be afraid to do it, you imbeciles. And then you have the announcer. (laughs) You have the PA announcer for the Flyers asking them to quit acting up. I got to play this. This is absolutely great. I love this. You have the announcer saying, please quit doing this. This is something out of idiocracy. This is like Monday night rehabilitation and idiocracy. This is no different. All right. Here's the audio. It's so great. Okay, those of you that have been thrown, we've done it now. Two-minute bench fighter for the Flyers for the delay of the game. On 14 minutes, 58 seconds. Way to go. He's saying way to go. He's embarrassed. Even your announcer had to say something. That's when you know things are bad. <laughs> But all the Philly fans today, I'm so proud of my team. What I hate most about this city and what I hate most about this fan base is nobody's taking any accountability. Nobody's saying we need to change our act. I listened to Philadelphia Sports Talk today. All they're saying is, yeah, that's just a few fans. It was the whole arena, you dumbasses. There's a reason you have the reputation. That movie with Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, I forget the name of it, with Robert uh, De Niro. The whole point is Bradley Cooper gets into the fight with the fans at the Eagles game. There's been so many movies and so many TV shows where they portray that. You don't see that with Texan fans. You don't see that with Seattle fans because they're too high and appreciating the game. You don't see that with Denver fans. If I may quote Galvin from the Mike Kelta show real quick before I go to break, you guys need to be better. Happy hour. Happy hour. It's time to turn happy on. It's time to turn happy on. What was funny about that last segment was I actually got a call. But I was in the middle of the rant, and with my ADHD, I didn't want to get sidetracked. And the best part about it was, it was my boss, the head of promotions here at 1025 The Bone, Mike Olivero. <laughs> that guy loves to goof on me in twi- on uh, Twitter. It's always funny. So let's play the voicemail and uh, hear what he had to say about me. This could go either way. It could be him loving me <laughs> or him as he busts my balls. Let's play it. 
here on Hoppy Hour. Here's Mike Olivero, the head of promotions at 1025 The Bone, as he called 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Yeah, leave a Twitter message and tell people to call in. Ha! You don't answer the phone. <laughs> That was his attempt at my voice. What I love about working at CMG is everybody has their own version of my voice. Johnny B, Galvin, Drew, Joe from Promotions, Sava, and then Mike, my boss. <laughs> it's the best voicemail. Let me put this <laughs> one more time. Yeah, leave a Twitter message and tell people to call in. Ha! You don't answer the phone. I love how he has my laugh down. One more time, this is great. Yeah, leave a Twitter message and tell people to call in. Ha! You don't answer the phone. (laughs) I don't know who that sounds like. It kind of has the vibe of, like, Jesse Ventura. You know what I mean? All right. I see this headline. And... I was absolutely sick to my stomach. The fact that this is even possible, the fact that this would even happen, the fact that this is plausible is an absolute joke, and we wonder why shootings keep happening. And I know there hasn't been a massive shooting in a while, but they keep happening in all bad neighborhoods. No one cares. Last night, they were filming a rap video in Chicago. What could go wrong? But seriously, people were shot and killed. And we wonder, how can we improve things? Well, what we did to the Charleston, South Carolina shooter by giving him rights isn't helping the cause. Trial for accused shooter. First of all, I get that he hasn't been found guilty. But this whole giving him a chance, the accused shooter. Who else walked into that church in South Carolina? It was this punk-ass bitch. Dylan Roof, all this piece of shit. My cat's excrement has a better legacy and a bigger heart than you ever will. Even if you're sorry in jail and you're trying to repent, fuck you. And I try not to swear on my show, but it's ridiculous. A South Carolina judge on Wednesday delayed the murder trial of an accused gunman in last summer's shooting by six months and rescheduled for January 17, 2017. Now listen. Why do you think it was pushback? Do we need evidence? No, we have plenty. Guess why it was pushback? Judge J.C. Nicholson told a court hearing he has been obliged to push back the trial to its planned date because defense lawyers said a doctor needs two to six months to conduct psychiatric treatment on a 22-year-old. And this is fucking bullshit. This is an embarrassment to anybody that has a disorder. This is an embarrassment to anybody that's on the spectrum. This is an embarrassment to anybody anybody that has mental health issues. Like me. I have ADD, ADHD, and bipolar. And my whole life, I've had to go from med to med, therapist to therapist, psychiatrist to psychiatrist. And now I'm doing really good. On Lamictal, Risperdal, and Clonopin. That's when you need psychiatric testing. I had a hard time with my learning disability, my bipolar. That's when you need testing. When someone has autism or schizophrenia or bipolar, ADHD, whatever. That's when you need testing. Who cares if we don't know what he has? He shot 22 people and took their lives. What is a test going to prove? So if he has bipolar, is it going to bring them back? But if he has schizophrenia, it's not going to bring them back? Who gives a living fuck what this piece of shit has? Ridiculous. And you're just giving him more time to breathe, and it's an embarrassment to any of the victims who are now laying in the ground because of this fucking shithead. Are you serious? What test do you need? It's not like making a murderer where you kind of need to do some evidence or O.J. Simpson where it's not completely clear. We all know that Dylan Roof did it. What is the test going to do? 
It's a waste of everyone's time. It's a waste of everyone's money. And it's an embarrassment. We wonder why shootings keep happening. I know we haven't talked about one for a while. But we wonder why violence is happening. Because we're not strict enough on them. It's the pussification of America. We don't know what his mental health problem is. Who cares if we don't have the exact diagnosis? If he's bipolar, ADD, ADHD, schizophrenia, whatever. He's an evil piece of shit who went into a church where people are praying and he took their lives. Siblings are gone. Parents are gone. Friends are gone. Significant others are gone because of this guy. But we're not going to put him on trial until next year because we need to know the official diagnosis. What the fuck is that shit? Please explain to me. Call me. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Please tell me why you think they need to have a treatment on him. Is it going to bring someone back? Is it going to explain it? We'll never know why he did it. It's because he's sick in the head. He's crazy. He's whacked out. Maybe he wasn't on his meds, but it's too late now. They're dead. We know he did it. Why are we giving this pussy rights? What the fuck? And I usually don't like swearing on this, but my God. Sickening. Absolutely sickening. Roof is being accused of opening fire on June 17th during a Bible session at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church and killing nine parishioners, including the head priest, in a crime that shocked the nation. Did it shock us? Because if it really shocked us, we'd be harsher on this punk-ass bitch. If it really shocked us, we would be outraged about the fact that we're giving him six months for treatments for his psychiatry. We would be sickened by this. We would be out of our minds. But we don't care because we moved on to everything going on with Trump. This headline just went under the water. Everyone just kind of swept it under the rug. We move on from shooting to shooting. We get outraged by something and then we move on. People are dead forever. They're not coming back. I would get if maybe you had to push it back a month. Fine. But a half a year? That's just a waste of time. He is charged with nine counts of murder, as well as attempting to murder three people who survived. And he faces the death penalty. Oh, don't give me that crap. If we're already giving him treatment now, and we're being nice to him now, he's not getting the death penalty. They'll keep pushing back the date, and it'll go on 2050, in like 40 years when he dies, or he gets killed in jail. But then again, we probably give him a cell by himself. This punk-ass bitch is fine. Don't you ever put that he's going to get the death penalty. Because none of these imbeciles get it. And I never want to hear anybody say, Oh, but I would rather be in prison than have the death penalty. Would you? Because when you're dead, there's no afterlife. You're gone forever. At least with the death penalty, you get to live. You know? With life in prison, you get to live. But if you kill them right away... Maybe it sets a precedent. Anything can help at this point. We're all about, we want to, you know, improve things, you know. We want to help out violence. But then we give pussies like him a chance. It says that he used cocaine and his mental health were a part of the shooting. Okay. Wow. Woo. Wow. A lot of people use cocaine. You don't see them going into fucking prayer meetings and shooting up places. There's other people with mental health. You don't see them doing it. I bet you somebody you would never expect takes meds. And it's an embarrassment to the mental health community. The fact that we're giving him a pass. It's an absolute joke that we're not even pushing hard on this. Oh, what a fucking joke. I would be embarrassed if I'm that judge. I couldn't sleep at night. The fact that we had to delay this six months. Oh, what a fucking, ugh. What a travesty. We're all about, hey, we got to improve this. How are we going to improve that? If we treat them like human beings, then nothing's going to ever change. I know technically Dylan Roof is a human being with rights. But when we keep pushing back the date and we're giving him treatment in jail and we're giving him all these tests, we're treating him like the greater being and we're not thinking about the innocent lives that are gone. So how do you want an America? 
Do you want to fix the violence going on? Or do you want to keep letting it happen? Think about it and wake up. Happy hour. Happy hour.